And I can't even kiss her goodnight. I really can't, because she's like three barrel rolls away. <laughs> so my wife and I have been married 20 years. And thank you. She is my high school sweetheart. Yeah, we got married in 1998. And in 2002, my mom remarried an American fella known as my father-in-law. <laughs> I couldn't tell who got that first. <laughs> I didn't realize there was a whole bunch of Alabama fans here, so <laughs> roll tide. <laughs> That's pretty cool, man. That's all right. So my wife is actually, technically, she's my sister. <laughs> I am my own brother-in-law. Which means I call myself if I need help moving. <laughs> Can you have a movie? I guess so. It's my stuff too. <laughs> We're raising two beautiful nephews. <laughs> and the safeties are back on the gun, so thank you very much. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, yeah, he's one of us, man. That's all right. All right. about him for a little while, you know? He said he's Baptist, and I go, okay, we can put it down, but I ain't keeping that safety on. Like, oh, I married to a sister. All right, he'd go. <laughs> How are we gonna deal with this problem right here? <laughs> it's awesome. So uh, my wife is actually here in the audience. I love her so much. She supports my comedy and supports this dream of ours together. Uh, and, and let me tell you how this happens, is we have this king-size mattress, which provides distance. <laughs> right when you first get together you're thinking oh man this is she's hot and he's hot we're hot together this is great but three years into it it's a different kind of hot <laughs> she turns into some i don't know karate master in bed and it's like get up off of me hot <laughs> i just want to cuddle <laughs> it's so bad and I can't even kiss her goodnight. I really can't, because she's like three barrel rolls away. <laughs> I don't have the core muscles to make that happen. <laughs> I love you. So we just high five it out. to kiss her goodnight, man, I've, I've, I've got to do the whole centrifugal force thing, you know, where you, 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 get, you anchor with the, the headboard with one hand and get that one leg out, kind of do that hip bump and just start rolling. <laughs> Midway through the first roll, the CPAP goes, nope! <laughs> Those things are great. Who make fun of them, but man, they are useful. They are amazing. Like any time, like you're in the hospital or something and, and they have the lights on all the time. Like I had a back surgery in December, and, which didn't work. But anyway, so I'm in the bed in pain and they're always in there, in and out of there. And so I finally just take the sheet and put it over my head. Cause you know, snorkel, right? <laughs> They don't realize that, though. <laughs> they just come in, they see the patient has been completely covered. <laughs> and I finally had some peace and quiet for a few hours. Because <laughs> I signed a DNR. That's, <laughs> that's how you get sleep in a hospital. Put your snorkel on, put the sheet over your head. Get some sleep. They actually, the, the one I have is FAA approved. That's awesome. I get on a plane, I'm sitting down, you know, we're getting ready to fly, I finally get crunched in there, right? I put on that mask before the flight starts, and the guy next to me is like, uh, what's that? He saw I don't die. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> See you when I wake up, 
maybe. <laughs> I do like to mess with people. It's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> I had this Dodge Challenger 2010 model with the, you know, the, the little thing popped out of the hood. I'm not a big car guy, but I like driving them, you know. It looked cool. It was like a Dukes of Hazzard kind of car. It was all black. And uh, this cop is behind me, and we're at Hardy's, and I'm going through the line. It's like, you know, eight people deep, and we're going around the corner, and every time the car moves ahead of me, I'd pop the clutch, right? <laughs> Just because I can. And the cop is like, yeah, that's cool. And he's right behind me the whole time. I'm doing like eight times. It's like the slowest car chase ever. <laughs> and we get up to the window and it's like, uh, and she says, hey, we got a problem. We're out of Coke Zero. What you want to drink? I was like, I don't care what you got. Just throw it in the bag fast. I'm getting chased by the cops. <laughs> and she throws my food at me. She says, go, 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 go. <laughs> Those people in South Georgia still talk about that. That's amazing. <laughs> I like at Christmas time to go to malls, like a really, you know, with a busy mall around where we live, and, and I look for that super spot, you know, the one that's closest to the, the food court that everybody wants, you know. And I'll go there for my lunch break, but I'll go ahead and get some food and uh, just do this on my lunch. And I'll just find the perfect parking spot, pull in, put it in reverse, and just put my foot on the brake and eat a sandwich. <laughs> Pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> Move the mirror just so you can see the perfect angle of people driving by. And you'll, it's like fishing, you catch one. <laughs> you get to see him go through all these little levels of, you know, emotions. And, like surprised and elated and confused. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Rage! You know? and at that point, you gotta let off the brake just a little bit, and they're like, well, finally! You, know, and you pull back, and you gotta wave at it, and you pull right back in. <laughs> I can get away with it because I'm big, right? Oh, never mind. <laughs> He's so mad at me. I always make sure my kid was with me in the little car seat when I'm doing it in case, you know, it gets all mad and I'll get out, hey man, how you doing? And pull the kid out of the car seat. They're like, ah, I can't attack you today. That's my, that's, I don't wear, you know, bulletproof vest. I just a kid. <laughs> and it's not even a real kid. It's just this doll I have in the travel. <laughs> He's grown now. My oldest child, when he was five years old, uh, man, we had a fun time. We went to McDonald's, and the, the manager was just having a bad day, right? You could tell that. It's like this, you know, gotta take your order. Just, like, just mad. And it doesn't take me any time at all to process, ooh, I'm gonna mess with this person. <laughs> and so there I am, my five-year-old kid. We're trying to get something to eat at McDonald's. And this guy's all mad and ragey. And I said, yeah, I'll take, you know, the big and tasty, whatever meal I was getting that day. Let me ask my son what he wants. And that's gibberish, just so you know, I have no idea. As a small child, when we left Iran, and I never coached him into this. I just thought it'd be funny if I did that. And he looked at me and he goes, Just until he hyperventilated, you know. Finally stopped. He wants a cheeseburger happy little ketchup only. For real? I guess it's a hard language. Okay. My dad doesn't email, email me at all because, you know, he can't find the cheque with the cheque. He never calls, never does anything. <laughs> it's so fun. It's so fun. Uh, they said my name is Moody, like happy, sad, angry, glad. Uh, it's because where I live in the South, they can't pronounce my real name, which is Mahmoud Molavi. I was born in Iran. And that's the welcome I normally get. So <laughs> yes. There are so many guns here tonight. <laughs> when it got real quiet, you heard all those little clicks like.
I got the safety off. Did that boy say he's from Iran? That is the biggest Iranian I have ever seen. That is gonna take the whole clip. His buddy next to him, I mean, I got you, I got your back, I got your back, we're good. He might be a Trojan horse packed full of a whole bunch of little Iranians. We don't want to stab him like a little spider. Boom, a whole bunch come out. I have to say Iran because people are like, Iran? What is Iran? Iranians. Did he say it was raining? It's crazy. It's sunny outside. I've been here since I was six years old, and, and that's what I get. You know, people are like, as soon as they heard my name, they just kind of freak out. They don't know what to do, right? So I was born in Iran, and in 1981, my mom thought it was a great idea to bring three Iran Iranian baby boys to the South. I don't know if you've ever seen a human kickball, but now you've seen a human kickball. So uh, my mom, so she actually is from the South and in the 60s, uh, she met my father. She was a nurse at a hospital and he was a resident, he was a surgeon and they would argue all the time in the emergency room among all the blood and splatter, everything. They're like, hey, if we can do this here, we can do this in real life. Let's get married. Let's do this. And so she's like, I'm gonna go and uh, travel to Iran and leave my family and she left and she went over there. She was there 15 years of her life. You know, and it's amazing. You think of blonde-headed, green-eyed American woman in Iran, 15 years. She's like, there's something missing in my life. What is it? <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> How do we get that back? <laughs> it took her two years to get us, you know, home. Or we're here in Chattanooga, Tennessee is where we ended up. Yeah, I know, man. They did not do... Football in Chattanooga, Tennessee, <laughs> in 1981. You know, it's like we wanted to play football, and they're like, well, well, uh, well, I don't. We got pads for them little fellas, but you will try it, you know. <laughs> the pads, we just want to kick the ball. And so we were playing soccer, but you know, we knew it as football. So we go to this place. It's a Presbyterian church, and they had 12 fields, and they're like really amped up about soccer, right? And we go sign up, and I got two brothers, right? They're older. I'm the youngest. I'm the biggest. Um, but they were delicious. Those, <laughs> I just kind of sucked them all in. So, so we go sign up, and my, it's my oldest brother's Majid, and my middle brother's Mahdi, and I'm Mahmoud, and the little blue-haired lady behind the counter, she's like, mm, we can't say these names. You're gonna have to have some American names. <laughs> I don't know if your boys are good, but if they're bad, the coaches are going to yell at them and stuff. And they try to say this, and all of a sudden, put spitting everywhere, getting all, you know, in the spirit and all. Snakes are going to rise up. We ain't that kind of church. <laughs> so she named me Mike, but she pronounced it Mac. Okay, you're going to be Mac. I'm like, what is a Mac? Yeah, I don't understand, but I was Mike, you know? And then that stupid commercial came out. Oh, Mikey, he'll eat anything. <laughs> She knew right up front. I was like, oh yeah, it's going to be him. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. so my mom, my mom, she's Methodist, and my dad uh, isn't. <laughs> so, so when I was 21, uh, I actually my neighbor had talked to me about Jesus, and, and and you know he really opened my eyes, and I became saved. And so at 21, I became a Christian. And uh, I'm an Iranian Southern Baptist. <laughs> I think I'm the only Iranian Southern Baptist where I live, anyway. And people are like, is that a joke? I'm like, no, it's not a joke. I go to a Southern Baptist church. I'm from Iran and I praise with way more spirit than anybody else. <laughs> Make that a ringtone, that'd be awesome. <laughs> oh my goodness, my pastor's like, we love it when you're here at church, man. Everybody's always got their hands raised up in praise and worship. 
So I think they're just scared. <laughs> He's right behind us. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. So I got baptized as a Methodist. And Methodists, they sprinkle. And so, man, I got so scared of this whole sprinkle thing. First, we did communion there. And, and the, the Methodist church has a lot of traditions and stuff. And I was trying to understand them. And they're breaking the bread and everything. And when he was breaking the bread, it didn't break. Like, it was stale. I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't, I don't know what was going on. But in my mind, I'm thinking, I can't do this. Because you go down to the altar, and you kneel down, and they bring the bread, and you pull the bread, dunk it in a little wine, and you eat it, right? I'm like, what if the bread doesn't break? What am I going to do? <laughs> so, but sure enough, all this happens. And I go for the bread, and it didn't break. So I just faked it and dipped it into air. <laughs> I got my fingers wet. Got it. Because in my mind, if I went for that, I was going to win that tug of war and that bread was going to hit this person. I'm going to lose balance. Boom, you know, just ruin everything. So the baptism was the same way. And when they decided they were going to baptize me, they got, they called up all their pastors like, hey, man, we're baptizing an Iranian. We're going to need all the hands on deck. <laughs> And they just came in this line. I just sat there, or kneeled there, and they said, douse, 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 douse. I was completely soaking wet. And what do you do when you're soaking wet? It's all over. You, you dry yourself. <laughs> and I baptized the two rows behind me. <laughs> it's a revival, y'all. It's great. <laughs> so I go to the Baptist church, and like, well, you're going to have to be full immersion here. I'm like, well, I kind of really was there. But okay. <laughs> If you got some sort of pond or something and a crane that can pick me back up. Because my pastor is little. He is, man. He works out he's, it's, and he wears medium shirts. Show off guns. I don't know. I pastor's guns to me. I'm not cool with, but whatever. So he's like, no, man, I can pull you out of there. I'm like, okay, whatever. I used to wrestle. And the way I would wrestle, I'd just get my muffin top and just smack him with it. Pretty sure this is gonna happen. So we go down and all of a sudden we're just kind of fumbling around and I've lost him. He is stuck somewhere inside me. And I finally get his feet, and I pull him out and he's like It's amazing. So I saved him. <laughs> There's a lady um, that I hate. I know I shouldn't hate people. We're gonna call her Angie. It is a made up name. But is that your name? It's not her. <laughs> Melissa. How about we call her Melissa? It doesn't really matter. There's a. Oh, really? Okay, we're sticking with Angie. She's right here. <laughs> so here's the thing. Well, Angie would kept, kept calling me Moo. And I'm like, I'm not Moo. But you look like a Moo. <laughs> right, yeah. And she's bigger than I am. <laughs> How do you call someone a moo if you're a moo, 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 moo? That's just wrong. It's like, what kind of name is Moody? Like, it's a nickname because people can't pronounce Mahmoud, right? And she freaks out. She learns my real name. She's, she stops what she's doing. She backs out and she walks away. And my buddy at work, he's like, did that just happen? I'm like, yeah, I did. So the funny thing at work, the first time I ever start, uh, worked there that day, someone said, hey, we got this great group of uh, diversity and inclusion called the Amigos. We'd love for you to be a part of it. You're Hispanic, right? I'm like, no, nope, never mind. <laughs> True story. Yeah. Apparently that, that word doesn't mean what you think it means, but okay. I get pulled over by the cops and, and, and I'll just say, uh, they're like, what kind of name is that boy? I'm like, uh, Italian. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that has saved me so many times. So Angie, she comes back the next day. She goes, hey, I want to let you know something. I got my life group together and we prayed for you. I was like, what? Why? You know. Oh, I don't know. She goes, I went on Facebook and I even put, God knows the need. And I got 45 thoughts and prayer comments right up after it. I'm like, what does that even mean? Why? What does thoughts and prayers mean, really? Is it someone that's just too lazy to really interact? 
Right? Like, well, I want to like it, but I don't know if God knows I need to make something bad, so I'm going to write thoughts and prayers. <laughs> right? Are they actually doing it? No. I mean, how about they just call the person? But they didn't, right? So they just thoughts and prayers. Oh, you know, when I see that, I just put in bulldogs and chainsaws. <laughs> It's the same thing. So, I mean, if someone needs a prayer, then call them up or Facebook Messenger or whatever and, you know, do it that way. You know, we all need that in our life. And I think it, it definitely works. It definitely works. But thoughts and prayers crazy. So, anyway, so she said I prayed for you. And I said, why? And she said, you know, you know. And I said, I'm Baptist. Right? Because I can feel that room. And she goes, well, that worked. <laughs> that was fast. I'm gonna have to tell all my people, it worked, it worked, it worked. People are stupid, is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> the only people I get along with right off the bat are motel owners. <laughs> <laughs> they see that credit card, they see the name, like, your name really is Mahmoud? How come you don't sound like us? <laughs> Cause I wanna live. I've been here 38 years, man. So have I. <laughs> well, then you suck. I don't know if you know, there's a travel ban out there. <laughs> and if you sound like this, they just skim right over you. <laughs> they do. Now people are like, wait a second, he's moved his voice back and forth too fast. Oh my goodness, what is he? He's just a fat fella that like Cracker Barrel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. You go in there and you listen, you assimilate and just start talking like them, right? I got all the biscuits and gravy you need. They're good. They're good. So my wife and I, we live on something called LSD. <laughs> which is least stressful decision. That's what that is. You get in a stressful thing. And like when I fly and they lose my luggage, inevitably they always lose my luggage. It sucks. As a fat guy, you can't just go buy clothes at the gift shop, right? Here's a voucher. Go get something to wear. <laughs> well, can I buy the whole gift shop and someone to sew it all together? <laughs> There, I got 14 armholes sticking out of the shirt. Oh, this looks good. <laughs> Kids falling around trying to tickle in every hole. <laughs> oh, we'll put you up in a hotel. They have nice drapes. I hope they do. Because <laughs> that's all that's going to fit. <laughs> so the LSD is to actually get my luggage, and I pack it into a box, and I ship it to the hotel, and I don't have to worry about anything. I just got my boarding pass, my backpack, boom, I'm on the plane. Right? LSD. But I don't have an American name, a legal one. Right? So it says Mahmoud Malavi in the boarding pass, and all the TSA agents turn into the one big Barney Fife. <laughs> like they figure something out. You're gonna be gone seven days. <laughs> Where's your luggage, boy? Okay, stereotypes. All right. You want to play along? I'll play along. Where I'm going, I don't need luggage. <laughs> Crazy people. <laughs> that departure board where I was all, all, all the times like, cancel, 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 cancel. <laughs> Where's he going? <laughs> it's stressful flying, stressful traveling. Oh my goodness. And then you get on the plane, there's another problem right there. Someone thought it was a good idea to make the aisle way one thigh wide. <laughs> Even all the little people know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> If you gotta go sideways to go down an aisleway, it's not an aisleway. It's a thighway. That's what that is. Come thigh with me. Even though, yeah, the little people are like doing this, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me. You know, earrings are getting hung on belt loops. I'm so sorry, just let it go. I'm taking it. And then you have the sky priority people. They get to sit first, right there in the chair. And they get to sit down before anybody else put their luggage on. It's like, oh, I feel so privileged. Oh, this is nice. And then all of a sudden, someone's butt rubs right past their head. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> that was rude. <laughs> yeah. So then the fat guy, he comes in, right? Where do they put us fat people? In the back of the plane, middle row, that's right. Why? I don't know. Maybe it tilts the plane up, make it go faster. I'm not sure. 
He's a fatty. Put him in the back. Put him in the back. He can't do exit row. Mm-mm, no. Why? Wouldn't you want me on the exit row? Really? Let's say the door popped off. I got it! Well, you've got three belt extenders, sir. I know. That's my tether. I'm good! I'll save you, save me. We're good. But you gotta go to the back of the plane, so you just gotta make, just pull it off the band-aid, you know, just, I don't care how many earrings your love handles hit, just rip it and go. And everybody in the house is like, bah, 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 bah. what was that? Then you get back there and the, and the chair is, the chair is 19 and a half inches wide. I know, because my thigh is 19 and a half inches wide. And you sit there and you got these things called forklift tines that take your fatness to a whole new level. They're called armrests. Right, but we know what it is. It just takes your love handles and puts them above your head. And you can't breathe it. And the flight attendant's like, hey, settle down. Let's get you a drink. What would you like? Put your tray down. <laughs> it doesn't go down. <laughs> I'm basically wearing the fellow in front of me. <laughs> How do you not notice? My head is on his head. <laughs> and I'm reading his Kindle. <laughs> and he's really, really slow. Are you done? <laughs> Tap. <laughs> Tap. <laughs> and thank goodness for the little lady over here. He's like, I need a blind cat. <laughs> no, no, you don't. <laughs> you need a friend. <laughs> we'll tuck you in. <laughs> I've been big my whole life. Oh my goodness. And uh, last year I was on, you know, I had to lose weight and uh, I still have to, I guess. <laughs> I lost 66 pounds, but I'm still bigger than... <laughs> I gotta lose so much more. I do. I, I, I don't know how much you weigh, sir. What is it? <laughs> you don't know how much you weigh? 190. 190. I get, what's your name? Bill. Bill, I gotta lose Bill. <laughs> to get an entire human and leave him behind. I'm sorry, Bill. We gotta part ways. So, anyway, it is what it is. And my scale at home, it just says, uh, er, like when I get on. E-R-R. -R. Like, it's scared to tell me. I can handle the truth, and it comes out like, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> Tell me. Okay, you weigh 150. <laughs> but my toe weighs 150. <laughs> my doctor has the detecto scale, the old school, right, with a bar and everything on it. I don't know if you've ever been to a festival where you get a mallet and you smash something and it makes a bell ring. It's the same one. <laughs> it is. I get on it, and all of a sudden, bang! And the nurse comes out with a big teddy bear. You win again. Look at you. <laughs> you have to have all a mass load of teddy bears at home. I do. I do. It's horrible. So I'm like, he goes, how much do you think you weigh? It's like, I don't know. How far does that thing go? Is it 350? Are we on the honor system? 351. Okay. Must be 351 if it's going to ding that thing. So loud, too. It's so bad. I got sleep apnea. I don't know if anybody knows what sleep apnea is. It's where fat people go to sleep and they die. <laughs> Their spouses think they snore. Right? And you hear the... <clears throat> that is your fat cells trying to suffocate you because they're like, we've lived a long life. We're done. <laughs> Close that airway while he's not looking. <laughs> Pile drive it. Boom! And what does the wife do, right? She spikes you in the elbow or in the side. And, oh, 
and you breathe again. <laughs> and she's like, oh, look at that. He stopped snoring. Worked. Right? No, you actually just put me closer to death. You move the fat cells around. <laughs> so I wear uh, a CPAP, right? Which looks like this big octopus that sits on your face like this. <laughs> it's horrible, man. Absolutely. My, my son will come in. He goes, Dad? I'm like, <laughs> I am your father. <laughs> so my wife, she's got celiac disease, uh, right? So celiac is where you can't have gluten. And think people don't realize how bad this is, right? Because the gluten <laughs> triggers the immune system to come attack the intestines. Meanwhile, it leaves your body open to anything, flu, croup, whatever anybody's got around you, boom, you're getting it, right? So because she wasn't diagnosed you know, for many years of her life, she was, what, 35 when she was diagnosed? 36, and, and she's got, most of her hearing is gone. Her eyesight is really bad, and she's got vitiligo. She's got a lot of things going on. You know, she, she's my, she's a rescue, is what I'm trying to say. We said that to, to some nurse that we're about to do this test, and they're like, hey, we're gonna take her back there. She'll need to leave her contacts and, and her hearing aids here, and, and you'll have to stay here. And like, I need to be with her because she's gonna feel real vulnerable not knowing what's going on. Like, oh, you need to stay here because of HIPAA regulations. I'm like, what do you know about my sister that I don't know? <laughs> So I told her, and I said, she's a rescue. And that lady was about to hit me with that clipboard, man. <laughs> and my wife, she cuddles up my arm. She goes, but he gave me a forever home. <laughs> That's what brothers do. <laughs> and she gets mad because we don't go on dates, right? And like, we never go on a date. Don't you love me anymore? Like, no, I just think it's against the law. <laughs> Thank you. Let's wait till the kids are grown before we can, you know. So, and, and the kids, you know, we can never find a babysitter we trust. Do you trust babysitters these days? They're crazy. I don't know these people, so I don't, we don't do anything. But then we found, we like to do the escape room uh, challenges and stuff for our date nights. And, and the kids really like the idea, so we decided to do escape room home edition. <laughs> so we just lock him in the closet and we go on a date. <laughs> Dinner, movie, some coffee afterwards. Come back, pop that door open, the little timer on the door is like 7.59, 59. He's like pushing on it the whole time. I was like, look at that, you did it. He goes, I did, oh, look at that. I didn't think I was gonna make it. I really didn't. <laughs> I tried every clue to turn that knob out about 3,000 times. It just didn't work. I was like, did you find the water bottle? He goes, I did. It's like, oh, cool, because that was a secret. And he was like, yeah, it was in that third shoe box on the right. I said, well, fantastic. You get to level two. This is great. Because <sighs> next weekend, we're going skiing. <laughs> we'll set that timer to 72 hours. You're going to have fun. <laughs> You're going to have a good time. So we learned that our oldest child, he's basically our demo unit. He just, <laughs> right? You're gonna mess up with him no matter what. So whatever we do with him, it's just, you know, we, we don't do with the second child. So, <laughs> but even when he's 40, you know, and I'm, I'm still gonna, it's still gonna be a first time experience with me and I'm gonna scare him the wrong way, take notes and then do the right one by the other kid. <laughs> so that's just how it's gonna be, man, it is. When, when he was tiny, um, <laughs> we were at a Chinese restaurant. This, this lady that owned it loved his eyes. Just, oh, I love to look at your baby's eyes. You're just so beautiful, right? And so she, she would do that every single time. And we're paying for dinner. My wife has already gone to go change my child, you know, because that thing happens, right? <laughs> and she goes, well, you can't pay till I see the baby. Again, instantly I realized this is another opportunity. <laughs> so she runs around the, the counter and she flips open the, tra the travel system and she sees no baby. <laughs> Where's the baby? I'm like, well, <laughs> I don't know. I guess he's gone. And so she stops everything. Where's the baby? We're looking for the baby. <laughs> looking under the tables and stuff. It's crazy. 
I checked the kitchen, he's like a cat. <laughs> My child turned into General So Chicken, but she would never come back. So we left. And the next time we came back, she goes, oh, hello, Mr. Funny Man. <laughs> You sure you want your heel? <laughs> like, yeah, let's take that challenge. Let's see what we can do. Let's see. I deserve that. I deserve that. We should do that. And my little one, he's so tiny. Oh my goodness. I don't understand how he's my child. I lose him all the time. <laughs> right? So like, we'll be a hot summer day in a zoo, buying some ice cream, all of a sudden, shoo, gone. And I freak out and I start crying. My mascara starts running. <laughs> And I'm waddling, waddling, you know, looking in every direction, like, where's my kid? Where's my kid? And the zookeeper comes up. She's like, what's going on? I said, I lost my child. And I'm describing what he looks like. And she finishes me. She goes, look, is that him right behind you? <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that. <laughs> He's in my blind spot. <laughs> When you get worried, he can't look past the wing, right? He's just, what are you doing back there, bud? He's like, Daddy, don't move. You're the only shade I could find. <laughs> <laughs> he always wanted me to go to the school and have lunch with him, because you know, that's a cool thing. Your dad goes, it's a real hero moment for your dad, like being asked to go and meet his friends at school, kindergarten, whatever. And, we get there and I realize all the furniture is so tiny. <laughs> like I can't even sit down and hang out with them at all, even if I try, because my knees, if I got down at a certain point, they're just gonna smack, you know, bow. I don't know what's gonna happen the rest of me, right? <laughs> Fall, crash into things, I'm not sure. And they had this integrated stool and table thing where it had eight little stools and one big table that folds up. And I'm like, how do I get on that? I really don't know, but I'm gonna try. Take one for the team. And I get about, you know, halfway down and pow, my knee snaps and I slam down on that table and seven children went <laughs> And I'm walking around with this big table hanging out behind me. <laughs> you lose all dignity being a dad this big. I don't know if you've ever had a colonoscopy and people talk about colonoscopies and all the prep and all the jokes about that. And what they don't tell you is after the colonoscopy, right? I'm just gonna tell you, don't wear white shorts. <laughs> don't wear them that day. When you wake up, there's a lady watching you. And she doesn't tell you why. She's just there. She's there to watch you fart. That's it. I'm like, hey, so can I go? In a minute. I'm like, what do I have to do? She goes, are you feeling gassy? I'm like, okay, I can't, I can't do that in front of her. My sister is sure. So I lie about it. Yeah, I'm good. I've, I've done that already. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't notice. All right. Well, you can go. And she knows what's about to happen. Because as soon as you start moving, well, whatever gas they put inside you escapes. Right? And a, and a Rorschach design ends up on those white shorts. <laughs> and your son is there. He's like, look, it looks like a butterfly, Daddy. And you run away. He's like, watch it fly. Watch it fly. So my wife, if she eats dairy, uh, it'll change her voice. It's like an acid reflux thing. And she'll turn it into like Teddy Pendergrass. It's very scary. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got what I need? Yes, absolutely, yes. <laughs> Whatever. But my youngest son, who'll come downstairs with a, a nightmare or something, you know? I said, Bob, I had a nightmare. Of course, he goes to mom, get consoled, right? Didn't know she had milk earlier. <laughs> Tell me all about it. Let me give you a dream. Close your eyes and think about just me and you in the forest together alone. We're gonna go pick some flowers. You know, the one that mom likes. He freaks out, man. He will take that three mile trek around the bed to come and get consoled by his father. Right? And I'm sitting over there. I am your father. <laughs> what do you want? Big old trail of pee heading back upstairs. <laughs> My name is Moody Malavi. You guys have been amazing. Thank you.
Thank you so much.